your shop. Presumably some later invader filled in your shop, but if you've been near the Arab marketplace, it's similar to this, where there's a stall where people would, would sell their things. So we'll ask, um, uh, maybe here, in the middle stall, we're going to ask you guys, would you mind going back 2,000 years in time, you hold on to some ropes and sell us some sheep and goats for the sacrifices. You will it? Okay, so you're in charge. You can become rich, real rich, because you're the only one shop on town selling sacrifices. You have a monopoly. Anybody know to talk them down? This is it the show? No? Okay, we'll deal with the prices afterwards. Great. Um, maybe the one right here, the next shop over here on the other side. Would you sell us some spices and perfumes? The sheep and goats smell a little, not the people. Right? Yeah, you guys are okay with that? Spices, perfumes, even Cleopatra wanted to buy the Engeri, not buy, she wanted to invade the uh, Engeri area just to get uh, perfume she could get only there in the Middle East, not elsewhere. It's a pretty amazing opportunity to make money. And we need a baker. Anybody like to bake? Grandma, you like to bake? Fantastic. We need. We have a group coming in like two days' time to the temple. Lots of groups are coming from all over the world. We need around 30,000 pitas. <laughs> you can handle that? <laughs> Maybe some people can help you out. This is all going on under the blue skies, right? Remember, this doesn't exist. This is only 700 years old, right? In the backdrop of Mount Moriah. This is Mount Moriah carved out cosmetically to look like the Western Wall. For all the purposes, the West Wall has ended, or it's so high up that it's beyond, we don't even see it. We've come to the end of the street, as I mentioned earlier, over here. Up above us, on the left side, is a rectangle. That rectangle is there, in that direction, like you looking up on top. This is a bird's eye view, like from the heavens looking down. That is a security fortress built by Herod called the Antonio. Some of you might be familiar with that from Christian literature, right? The Antonio. It was built on one that preceded it from the time of the Maccabees called the Bira or the Barris in English. That was there. Now, why are all these security fortresses on this section? Because you can see the mountains going up. You've noticed it probably walking up yourselves. The fact that we're on ground level, instead of looking down, shows the mountains going up, and therefore enemies can come in easily. And really, that's where the Romans broke through. They broke in through the northwest corner from that side. Pretty dangerous spot to hang out. Now, Herod sees this black-looking snake, this channel over here. Everybody see that? What is that? That's a water aqueduct. Another one coming from this direction. Remember we talked about north, underground, underground springs coming from the north and help the uh, people up in the Muslim quarter to get water? Well, that was water coming down there that originally, at least in the time of the Maccabees, maybe as far back as the first temple, used to bring water to the temple mount. Okay? Herod didn't like it. Why? He was afraid it would adversely affect the foundation of the Antonio, the security fortress. So he redirected the stream and he blocked off making a water tunnel. He blocked it off and then he had his team a lot of people, and they were paid to build the Western Wall, by the way. I mean, all the walls were paid for labor, not slave labor. He had them build that other aqueduct that we talked about earlier from 23 kilometers away. Pretty interesting to see how one person designed such massive, massive changes. Okay? Before we leave this spot, if you guys can look around and see, is there some element in this room that looks half finished? This, by the way, took 50 years or so to dig out all the tunnels until we popped out of the other side. What did you say? They took out Earth, that's right. But that's the mountain. Is there something here that looks like yes. sun, like not totally? Very good, very good. Okay, she's pointing to the mountain right over here. You can see this chasm, somebody took a good chisel and, and tried to get rid of this mountain. Presumably, and also over here at the corner, you can see they're removing it from below, presumably to take this chunk of mountain out of the way to continue the street. Now I'm standing on this big stone and there's another one over here. You can feel really smooth, right? This stone, these stones were put there. I, I don't think that they had a vision of in order to make me feel taller. It doesn't hurt, but that's not what it's here for. It was here in order to continue paving this street because presumably this was going to be removed. Something happened to stop them. 
okay, two theories of what happened. So one theory is that in the year four, Herod died. And when Herod died, nobody was there to pay the wages to the builders. And so the wages abandoned the job, the, the builders, excuse me, abandoned the job, and that was it. And this work stopped there. That's one theory. The other theory is that 66 years later, in the year 70, the sound of war was getting here, right? The act of the, uh, what do you call those, the catapults and the screams, and you don't even have to imagine, because you can turn on the news and see it's war, breaks out, people run for their lives, abandoning the job again. So there's two theories about what happened here, what really happened, we're not 100 percent sure because all the architect or the archaeologists also have different opinions. Okay? We're gonna be moving on in a moment. First we're gonna be going through that aqueduct that I mentioned, but before I'm gonna see a short film that gives us theories how they move the smaller stones into place. There are two screens. Those people have more energy. Please go up the stairs. The other people can stay down below. Everybody gets a chance to see on this. It's fine. Thank you.